Happy birthday, man. Well, thank you, Howard. How are you, buddy? Uh, didn't I already congratulate you on your birthday? It's not really your birthday today. No, today it? really is my birthday. Oh, then why did I have my book like it was a couple of days ago? I know. You might want to get a whole Laura, Laura on, on, in, on your book. <laughs> oh, man. I got a You mean today's your birthday? Today's my birthday, which makes me happy because that means I do not celebrate a birthday with Ralph Cirillo. Or Hitler. Oh, man. Wait, you know, I'm sure about this book thing. <laughs> and I'm going to correct it right now. Let's see. 23rd. Bubba, what's today? Wednesday? Today's Wednesday the 23rd. And Bubba... Also, birthday. William Shakespeare and Valerie Bertinelli share this birthday <laughs> as well. Not that you would care. Maybe, uh, maybe Valerie. Yeah. Hey, how you doing? Good, what how are you doing? What are we in, like, of your day? <laughs> <laughs> we're on, uh, God, let me see, Brent. What are we on broadcast hour wise? Four plus, uh, we're like in number six. I got to tell you, you're my hero, man. I don't know how the hell you're doing it. How old are you now? I'm 42. 42, and you're doing eight hours a day. Let's think about, now, where were you when you were 42? You were at NBC? No, you were at uh, K-Rock. Oh, well, 42, man. I, I was already... Uh, K-Rock. I was, uh, yeah, I was thinking about my accomplishments here. I got interviewed for WBCN's 40th birthday, and, uh, you know, I was reflecting on the fact that uh, if anyone, when I was in college, I went to BU, if anyone had told me I would have been the morning man at WBCN in Boston, I would have, you know... I would have thought they were sending me to Mars instead. I, I wouldn't have believed it. But uh, but forty two, I was. I mean, I was. Uh, you know, I was in New York. I had a couple of stations. I was doing all right. I think you had more than a couple. You had I probably, think I'd already made my movie. Maybe I, I think that you. I think you probably had Philly, uh, you Los think, Angeles, Los, for sure. Los Angeles, DC. New yeah, York, I, I, New York. I already had quite a few, you know. Well, we're failures by by that. By, by that. <laughs> well, listen, I was I was on a roll. I had to prove to Mel I could do it. <laughs> yeah, Mel boy, Carver's a man. He want, he wanted to see uh, a return on his investment. Boy, he's a tough cookie. I'll tell you. You know, I really didn't get a chance to have a lot of, a lot of time with Mel, but I know that when I was up there in December, <laughs> Mel walked in. I was in Scott Greenstein's office. Mel walked in and goes, "I just want to let you know that I got the three month." under on the pool of success. I go, I go thank you, Mr. Carmazan. He goes, yeah, no problem. Yeah, you should be a taskmaster. He's a good guy, man. I, I dig Mel. And I, when is this merger going to happen already? It would be nice did, to broadcast. Did, did, like, did, you, did you see, what do you think about this? I haven't heard you comment on this yet. Did you see Senator Brownback? What yeah, he's, what, it just shows you, man. The government is full of... I was talking to someone the other day. Oh, my cousin. My cousin is in the health food business, and he was talking about how long it took for Whole Foods and... Um, there was another uh, company that Whole Foods merged with, or whatever, and and but meanwhile, this merger puts them all to shame. I mean, when do you ever see anything as dumb as satellite radio? Two companies merging, uh, but the oil companies and uh, just about every other company has gone so much quicker. And already, the Department of Justice says there's no monopoly, and now all of a sudden it's still a, it's just so That's what I understand is if the, I, I thought the harder of the two would be the DOJ, not the FCC. I thought yeah. oh, yeah. DOJ is going to be the ball busters and the FCC is just going to go along with whatever they do. Yeah, well, that's the way it should be. You know, uh, Rupert, I just read Rupert Murdoch's by Newsday here on Long Island. He Long is. Island is the 11th largest market in the United States, so Newsday has a monopoly. They're the only newspaper out there. Not that someone else can't start one, but they're the big newspaper. And now Murdoch's going to own that too for like, he's buying it for 500 million and, I'm just, and i have no problem with it it's just you know it just seems like no one worries about any of these other situations you know hey you know what it's so dumb people are bored with it anyway i, I just can't believe um, but it, it I, but they're, but, out, but they're you know? being bored is our livelihood this is how you and i and we're all make a living and a, and a good one at that but they're for this yeah and at the end of the day man brownback's made it personal on you howard he really has yeah, I mean, he, he, what do you want? He, he wants satellite radio to be censored. Can you imagine? Someone's paying for this. It's a closed system. He's worried about he, to be said. That's it. Well, why don't we just censor all the books too? And yeah, but he, censor. He, I think guys a but, but, <laughs> but his direct quote was: "Any place that, that, pay, Howard that, that pays Howard Stern this much money and has Howard Stern doesn't deserve the government's I'm jealous. He's yeah. jealous. He really is. He's a jealous. Yeah, because look at me. What a what a life. <laughs> look at me. Look yeah. at me. Hey, just look uh, at me. How's your boyfriend Hulk Hogan doing? What's going on? Oh, uh, you know what? He, he's actually doing good now that he's saying, you know what? I got a girlfriend. I'm getting something. Getting well. Yeah. I mean, he's he's got a girlfriend. He's being public about it. She's positive. She's a good person. Are his kids being shown that the uh, Brooklyn looks that, like Brooke? <laughs> <laughs> What's going on with that? I'm worried about the guy. I like the guy. You, you know, you, you kind of introduced me to him and stuff, and. Yeah, you know, it is a little bit weird. She does have Brooke-type characteristics. Yeah, but, uh, I mean, and, you know, uh, 
Why not? Brooke's a good looking girl. Yeah, why not? Um, and yeah, would you still work out with him? I don't even see no, him. No, I don't even see him. He's in LA right now doing that gladiator, you know, doing doing gla- gladiator. Yeah, he's doing that show. I, I've not seen him since like February. Hey, did you hear Joe Frazier on my show the other day talking about ultimate fighting? No. Yeah, I heard the I heard the whole thing. It was so funny. He goes, man, he goes, I don't get that kind of funny. Like, that's how women fight. He goes, they kick and they scratch and they... <laughs> he goes, when guys get tired of punching, they start scratching and kicking each other. <laughs> First time I Boy, he it. doesn't understand that sport he, at all. He, he doesn't does understand he? First time I ever. But it was just funny, you know. You yeah. know yeah. Hey, man, he's a boxer. He doesn't understand. First time, you, time you, I ever saw Joe Frazier was at the Philadelphia uh, John DeBella funeral when I went to, I went and covered it. I went. I went for W I O Q as a correspondent to, to Howard Stern's fun funeral. <laughs> That's so funny. I, uh, poor Joe, man. Joe's on a walker, man. I got all bummed out. I Is he really? Guy. Is he really on a walker? Yeah, yeah. He had some kind of spinal fusion, or you know, they. I don't know. They got all of them did something. But how about Artie, man? Artie going to be okay? Yeah, Artie's doing good now. I think Artie really. It kind of was cathartic for him. He kind of. I think he kind of realized how much we're all for him and. I really do think he appreciates his job a lot now, you know. Now that it almost all ended, I think he kind of says, you know what, if it had all ended, it would have been a shame because it's a pretty good gig. It's a free gig. Yeah, I mean, you got four days a week. You come in for a couple hours, brown, yeah. and we hang out and have fun, and, uh, you I mean, know, you're not it, a, it ain't I, a bad life. I mean, we work with him for you, and you're not, you're not a slave driver by all means. No, I don't. I mean, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think, you know, I don't think I ask anybody to do anything on that show, <laughs> <laughs> quite frankly. You know, whoever does something, I'm just happy. Yeah, you're just happy you guys all get along. And, you know, with, with Artie, you're, if he would make it like four shows in a row, that's success in itself. He actually has a pretty good track record, honestly. I mean, he missed a couple of shows, but yeah, he has a pretty good track record. And okay, he fell asleep during the show a couple of times. That's fun, but, but you, can tr- you can turn that into being funny. Yeah, I love I mean, it. That, that, God, I, that was funny. If, if, if I was Howard, if it's ever going somebody like, hey, Artie, fall asleep for me, kid. <laughs> <Him>. <laughs> so I can get on you. Him falling you know, off the bed. Hey, what do you say? I got a call. Okay, you mind if I take that? I'm waiting no, for, go ahead. for dinner. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right. Go ahead. Ralph. Oh, man. You know what? You know what? Your story about Ralph. Your, Ralph, Ralph your story about Ralph being me. late the other day was one of the most funny stories. I know you were aggravated, but it was the one of the funniest I've ever. When heard. he told Ralph to go home. Yeah. When he yeah. Hey, go I mean, home. The guy has a job where, honestly, you guys, it, it, I ask him for an hour a week, but really, I only need him for like forty minutes just to pop buy some clothes and stuff. And then he shows up a half hour late. And he goes, well, I, don't get I it. have a terrible diarrhea. <laughs> I ter- I terrible diarrhea, Howard. Diarrhea. Sorry, sorry, and, sorry. I, and I said, you know, man, stay home. Get back out of the apartment. <laughs> I have terrible diarrhea, Howard. Sorry. sorry, yeah, sorry. And, then he, and then he goes, well, I'm on antibiotics, and it, it, it <laughs> aggravates my stomach. And then I find that he's been drinking all night. <laughs> my stomach. It aggravates, this <laughs> might aggravate your stomach. <laughs> yeah, come on. <laughs> Hey, Howard, right. in, in your past, you know, working with so many people and, and different people in and out of the studio, has there ever been that one employee that you really didn't, like, feel comfortable around that maybe he was going to fly off the handle at any point time? Yeah, I Jack, did. So, so Jackie, Jackie I, I used to always look over my shoulder because I could just feel the envy on my back. <laughs> hey, don't get mad. I, I, you know, I love Jackie. I loved working with the guy. I couldn't understand. He was, he, I think he just kind of felt like he should have a percentage of what I'm doing. I, he was very money-oriented and very g- busy looking at what I was making as opposed to how well he was doing. And I always try to explain it to him, but, you know, Jackie had his point of view. And Did you feel like he was, like, trying to maybe stab you in the back at certain nah, points? I, you know, Jackie's not like that. It's just, it's just the money thing was so... He was obsessed with it. It yeah, was it, really his way of uh, getting approval. You know, it was uh, like, you know, hey, if you're going to pay Howard this money, uh, i got to get money, or you, you don't love me. And I, I, I don't know, it was a whole... Issue there, and it's it's better. I think we're apart, you know. Right. I think it ate him. Well, I think not it for ate, him. I think it, I think <laughs> it ate Jackie up inside. I think it ate well, Jackie up be, inside I'm, what everybody else made. I'm going to be honest with you. You know what? When I was up there doing some Howard 100 News, which I was so much out of my element because I'm too mean and stiff when I do interviews, yep. you know, <clears throat> like with Mr. X and all whatever. Anyway, make a long story short. Out of everybody that I interviewed, the only person I didn't really like. Was 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 Jackie? I I just did him and I just didn't get along for some reason. Well, you you ended up interviewing Jackie. Yeah, yeah. remember remember they they played it and then you and Fred listened to it and you talked about it on your terrestrial show and Fred was all pissed off because Jackie was rewriting history and oh right 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 now you know Jackie I'm going to tell you something Jackie is the most fun guy ever to hang out with Bubba if you hung out with Jackie you guys would get along so great I mean the guy is genuine fun out of all the members of my show all the cast members. I got to tell you, Jack. I used to go over Jackie's house all the time. Uh, I go. He used, he had a house on a beach. I'd go hang out there. I'd bring my kids by. He was really, I think, my one of my closest friends, and I loved the guy. But when it came to the work thing, it just felt nuts that like it was the Howard Stern show, I think, or something. I, I mean, he would he would say it didn't, but I don't know. I just kind of felt like there was a real. 
And look, if he just kept his, you know, kept his nose to the grind. Look where, look at the kind of money just by, just by being on the team for that long. Look at the kind yeah. of money he'd be making right now, Howard. Well, I used to say to him, I said, Jackie, do another five years. You're getting good money. You're yeah. gonna stock some money in the bank. You ain't getting any younger. Let you know, and let's have some fun, and we'll do. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I don't know. I, I think he, know. To like, he wanted like fifteen more dollars a week or something. I want to know. I want to know. I want just about what almost you're making. Come on. And I don't blame. Listen, everybody wants more money. I get it. You know, but but um, <laughs> you know, at some point it got crazy. But who knows? Maybe he was right. Maybe he was wrong. But it, you know, everything's for the better. You know, I'm one of those people that tends to hold on to everything and everyone, and I get really weird when people leave the show and right. And I start thinking, oh, man, we need him, we need him. And then, you know, then Artie came into the show, and it's a whole different dynamic, but I kind of like the new dynamic. It revitalized me, and sometimes change is good, and you can't, you, you can't be so uptight about it. If you, if you believe in yourself, you're, I sound like Dr. Phil, but if you believe in yourself and you believe in what you no, do, you, you have a real sort of any combination might work. You can't you know? be Dr. Phil. you got a real degree from a real university, don't you? Yeah, <laughs> be you, man. There you go. Hey, how's, is your house in the Hamptons done? Yeah, sort of. You got to come up again this summer. We got to hang out, married, and you know. And first of all, listen, hey, Spice, I love you. I love all the guys on the show. You know, Mance and all of them. But uh, and Twenty Five Cent and everybody. But <laughs> but I, you know, I love Brent, and uh, I know Brent, and uh, you know, Bob, I love you. But the thing is, now I'm going to have this small little reception kind of thing, mm-hmm. and I don't know who to invite from the Bubba show. You know, I mean, you of course, but. But my oh, guys, come on, please. Don't even think about it. Dude, I, my, my guys you know. don't even expect it. So what about it. Brent? I got a relationship with Brent. I can't live. But if I invite Brent, then what about Spice? And then what about, you know. I don't expect any anything, honest to God. I mean, I appreciate me even uh, being in your thoughts, but it's, you know, really not necessary. That's the Who truth. Who are you again? This is Spice. <laughs> <by the way. laughs> no, seriously. No, not, seriously. Not. It's, it's Spice. Yeah. I mean, really, it's, you know, it's just weird, this whole. Every, like, yeah. people, people get insulted. And no, none of us will. Dude, I, I would never. I would never be insulted. It's, it's a joy to be a part of. Ralph keeps telling me I'm married. No. I'm like, he let goes, me tell you something. Fine. Why do you need to be married? I, I, I really hope that you that you believe me on this. I really do, and I don't mean it's like a really. We all of us. I can be the spokesperson for all of us. We're so appreciative of you saving. We were dead in the water when nobody believed in us. That we we seriously does not everybody agree on. We don't. I mean, your wedding is. Obviously, I get so embarrassed when you say that stuff, man. But it's true. I mean, yeah, if you read... thank you. I mean, but uh, listen, you're a talented guy. It was great that, that you came aboard. I mean, it was good for everybody. So, well, it is. Know. But I mean, at the end of the day, Howard, you took a big leap of faith and you took a you took a chance on us, and I'm glad that we've paid off. And but, it worked out. And every one of us have had that meeting. Say, you know what? I mean, I think I've probably done ten interviews where I said, you know, and Howard Stern. I mean, he is a bigger person because. How are you feeling about terrestrial radio? I'm gonna, Howard. I'm. We're doing good on it. Yeah, and you're having fun? Uh, well, yeah, we are. What about the language <clears throat> transition? I mean, all of a sudden you can't talk this and that, you know. Uh, thank God it's the first show of the day because we have because we could never do we could never do a terrestrial show after the satellite show. Right. Because, but you know what? I thought right, the transition would be tougher. And like you said, uh, we're, yeah, I mean, every what day. What do you do? You hit the button on yourself? Smash it. Yeah, then they got a button as well. Isn't it weird with the button? You know what happened to me with that button? Dead Air Dave. We're not, well, what happened with me with the button was after a while... I stopped caring, and like no matter what I said, I wouldn't hit the button on myself. <laughs> like it just became too much effort, right? And then I just wait for Tom or someone to hit, and if they and I and, and then I was like, let them worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> so I never ever hit it on myself anymore. I didn't care. Well, that's when K Rock was treating you, but you yeah. know we're, we're still in the honeymoon stages as to where we're at. And, oh yeah, uh, they kissing you a little bit. Well, we went in just the, in thirty days, and, yeah. and we went twelfth to first, twelve plus. Oh wow! In thirty oh, days, then they got to kiss you. Twelfth to first. 2554. You guys get a bonus situation right Yeah, anything? we got a little bit of bonus situation. How's the weight? You come you bringing it down? Yeah, more you know, we got the new Clem gym. We just built a gym. Nice. So we in between shows, we go and work out and I yeah, you know what? I'm doing better on it. So by the time you see me in the Hamptons, I don't think I'll quite be my Bubba K-Rock uh, Schvelt, but I'll be close. Pretty what do you close. weigh now? Uh, I don't want to get into all that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably I'm I'm probably a 5 to seven pounds lighter than when I saw you in the Hamptons. You're five or ten pounds? Yeah, lighter. Lighter. Than when you saw me in the Hamptons. We got to put a bigger dent in that. Well, no, I know. I just, I just really you got, just got in, on it. I just really got into it. So uh, you're not, you're over three hundred. We know that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, oh, you know, we, we've got actually to towel wipe in your. We've got another special guest on the other line. I don't know if uh, Howard wants to say hello to him or not. I think they have a little bit of history. Mark McGrath. Oh, I know Mark. Sure, yeah. he's a great guy. Hold on, one second. 
Hey, McGrath. Hey, what's up, dude? I got Howard on. Howard, hey, Mark, how come you, hey, Mark, how come you do Bubba's show? You don't do mine. <laughs> oh, please, man. You know, I mean, you go way back, dude. You, you, when I, I need some more songs to record, man. My band's been in a rut for a while. Hey, Howard. Yeah, yeah Mark's a good guy. When, Mark early on came on my show. This is when his band first, you know, sort of broke. And... Uh, he came on and he did one of my songs for my sixth grade band, and he, he he did a brilliant job with it. And we've known each other ever since. And you know, Mark's just a great guy. Hey, Howard, Which can one you did man? they do? Psychedelic V or psychedelic V? Yeah, and people. So Howard really helped me. I mean, we covered that song. Our first record was released, and it was dead in the water. We covered the song, got it to Howard, and then because we got their uh, exposure on the show, they let us make a second rec- record, which became Flying. I'm selling two million copies. So Howard, yeah. you are the man, bro. I yeah, can't t- make you up. At the end of the day, McGrath, you owe Howard a lot, like we all do. You know what? No doubt, bro. I'm in the same boat. On, uh, and Bubba, happy birthday, Hollywood. homie, real quick. What's that, Mark? Happy birthday, homie. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Happy birthday. I'm going to get off, but it is weird to see Mark on Access Hollywood and stuff because... Howard, it's extra, bro. Extra. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's on there, too, but let me say something. It's weird to see Mark because I really thought Mark was going to last like a week on that show. <laughs> you know, I thought it was like a publicity stunt, but he, he actually like turned it into an announcing gig, and uh, he's done quite well. What did he pay you for that? Yeah, what kind of money making? You know what, dude? I, I get paid well just to be a jabron, man. I, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm you're getting a million bucks on there, right? I'm getting in that neighborhood, Howard. You know what, what I'm saying? And it's and I'm staying. In, you know, I, I don't have to travel as much. And believe me, I'd love to still be doing music, but the, the industry kind of imploded at the time. And I'm lucky to have a job at all. I mean, I do hey, two Robert, things that I don't do well: sing and. Can you imagine you're doing eight hours of air on the day. Mark does a half hour, reads those things. Boom, million bucks. Hey, Howard, man, I'm, I'm, I've been blessed. Huh? You know it, dude. Hey, Thank Howard. you, man. Hey, Howard, you can you... good uh, looks, man. You how... know what, Bobby? you got to ask about all the women this guy's had. Well, I was, just, I was just getting ready to say, Howard, can you imagine, because you and I kind of keep score on this, yeah. can you imagine if you're Mark McGrath in Los Angeles, for, you know, rock star, and now on TV, can you imagine the kind of... The kind of thing he gets is like, if they filled up Playboy with all he got, you would say that's the best issue of Playboy you ever saw. <laughs> the Mark He's McGrath... Had every famous chick... And, you know, he'll tell you he's got a small and all that, but it hardly yeah, matters. Sure. He gets them all. And he, you got Madonna in a parking lot, right? Oh. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Howard, God, Howard's the best, man. He can, he can get anything on anybody. No, but, Mark, Mark you, you, you know, you made out with her or something in a parking lot, right? I, I may have done a little something like that, Howard, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, 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 I don't yeah. care, but. No, but I anyway. certainly didn't. I don't want to bring hey, listen, Mark, now. I don't want to take up your time because you're. Wait, you're Howard, I don't want to take up your time. Now all the Bub Army's going to be pissed at me for getting Howard off. No, 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 no. I got to go anyway. Actually, I'm going out He's the got dinner. food. He's got food coming. I got right, food Howard, coming. Howard, love you to death, bro. Hey, yeah, Howard. Bubba, uh, listen, happy birthday, all the boys on the uh, Bubba show. Uh, just saying hi. And, Mark, uh, great to speak with you. Come by sometime. I love you, Howard. Great to talk to you, too, right, man. Howard, Later. I'll talk to you next week. Right. Hold on now. Mark. Bubba, don't do that to me. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Don't be mean to the one of the Howard. Uh, hey. <sighs> now, not only that, but, you know, he even makes me nervous. Dude, I'm nervous to talk to you, and then they throw Howard on, and Spice just threw me right into the mix, bro. I'm like an idiot. <laughs> come, on. Oh, come on, I knew you could handle Let, it, buddy. Let's talk about it. I love Howard. You know, he's been so good to me in the band, but dude, I, you know, on Bubba's birthday, and now I shut Howard off the phone, the Army's going to be killing me, dude. I can't believe you fed Madonna in a parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you went Madonna in a parking lot? Mama, you, went, you did a guy with her in the parking That's lot? nuts. You, you know, it's so funny, dude. It's like back in the day, like it was like a 97 or something when I had a little going on back then. And, uh, she, you know, we, I met her at this like pre-Oscar party, and she goes, Walk me out to my car, you know? I'm like, okay, and I'm all drunk. It's 2 in the morning, and I'm just, like, jabroning out. And I get out to the parking lot, and all this paparazzi starts to light me up. And I, that's all new to me, dude. I got, like, one single. It's the whole celebrity <laughs> brand new. And I, I walk her to a car, I, and I give her, like, a little kiss on the cheek, and that's it, you know? And then this paparazzi guy start going, Sugar, you know, you're a this, that, and the other. And, I, and, you know, being the tough guy I am, I looked and I picked the smallest guy in the, in the pack and just, you know, lit him up a little bit. And, of course, of course, Celebrity Uncensored filmed it, and now it's on every of those Celebrity Uncensored crazy guy go wild things. Well, you, you should have you should you should have stopped Madge right there and said, "Hold on, hold on." Had to roll her window down and just tongued her the fuck down like right there. <laughs> God, Bob, I just blew it, bro. I was just—I was new to the game, man. I, I failed miserably. No, but you know, you know, I let—I let—I let everybody run with it and go. Oh, Mark's going out with Madonna, this, that, and uh, Ricky Martin out, Mark McGrath in. You know, so I, let, I, I ran with that thing for a while, but unfortunately, nothing happened, no matter what Howard tells yeah, you. I, I've seen that video, and I got to tell you, you know, I mean, like you said, it was like 10, 11 years ago, and I yeah. look at you now, and dude, honestly, you know, you have not aged a bit. Well, Botox, you're almost, you're almost freakish. Dude, hey, I don't right, know what you're doing. Dude, Botox, Propecia. 
and skin all the others, man. Just keep me in the game. Are you, you know? serious? I mean, is that, is that what you're doing? Oh, he's on like, growth you know, I and weed. Couple, like three years ago, dude, I started, my hair started going back, you know, and I'm like, oh, you know, I, I don't get paid because I'm so talented. Yeah, you but your hair, I yeah. Hold on to what I got. Yeah, your hair is kind of like your livelihood to a certain right, extent. Unfortunately, <laughs> But uh, so I, I asked my bro, and he goes, I go, dude, you know, what's up with your hair? It was thin in a while, and now you got more. He goes, dude, Propecia. So I went on it three years ago. I haven't lost a hair since then, man, but it's so it works. great now, dude. Dude, wow. I'm, I'm getting on that plan. Have, have, any, grown, have any grown back? What's what? that? Has any of your hair grown back on Propecia? No, it hasn't, dude, but it's it stayed. It's it's hung in there. So I'm 40, dude. I turned 40 a month ago, and I, just to have my hair, you know, I, I'm just I'm just happy to be in the game still, dude. You know? See, now, now, see, Mark McGrath has to get on Propecia. If not, he looked like right said Fred. <laughs> <laughs> hey, by the way, we're playing a fair with him this weekend. Um, too sexy for him. <laughs> That's a joke. No, do you, do you, Bubba, Bubba didn't even laugh. He's like, is that true? No, are you, are, you, are you doing any Sugar Ray stuff at all? Well, this weekend in Vegas, we're playing with the Goo Goo Dolls in uh, at Mandalay Bay. Nice. So, oh, you know, we, cool. we still do a lot of jam- you know, we still do a lot of uh, shows. It's still the same guys in the band, and you know, like I said, in a perfect world, we'd still be recording and, and touring. But uh, you know, the industry kind of imploded, and, and bands that were kind of like us, the Third Eye Blinds, the Everclear, mm-hmm. Smash Mouth, we all got dropped, and you know, it just it was like yesterday's news. The Strokes come along, Interpol comes along. And it's like later, dude. See, yeah. you see, Mark, Third Eye Blind, honestly, is is one of my favorite all time bands. I think lyrically, Stephen Jenkins is a genius. But um, I'll tell you this too: you're one of those bands that you know, 20 years from now, 10 years from now, 30 years from now, it doesn't matter. You're one of those bands that you can still tour, and people say, "Oh, you know what, Sugar Ray's coming," and you can still get good scratch for doing a tour. I mean, I can think like you know what? I mean, I hate I mean, you weren't like a, you're not a one hit wonder. You can put on a full show I'm not and a good in your, one. I'm not getting in your business, but I got to think that a you know weekend at Mandalay Bay Bay pit pulls in six figures. No, no, we not for us because we're opening for the Google Dolls. But you know, dude, you, you're gonna see about fifty, sixty. That ain't bad. And let me tell you something. I'm going there to party. I'm going to be there an hour. I'm going to play music. I'm going straight to the bar, and then wherever the night takes me, dude. And then, <laughs> then I'm going to get paid for it and go home happy. Because you're Mark fucking McGrath, buddy. Well, I'm not angry, Bob. You guys have taught me well, man. You're Mark McGrath, can you again? Let's talk about. How much in L.A. you're getting, Mark McGrath? Dude, I mean, you seriously. Know, I, you know, during my years in the 20s and 30s, I, I was in there, dude. I was doing well. And, you know, being on the road, and you guys heard the story about this stuff on the P and that whole thing. I remember right. you guys told me that last time. Right. But I did it all, dude. You know, but now, they, I, I, it's like I'm, you know, I'm, it's like school nights for me now, bro. I, you know, I, I got to get up early. I got to be on TV, so I can't be, like, all hungover. And so I've calmed down tremendously. And, you know, I've had a girl I've been seeing off and on for about 14 years. We're kind of settled in right now. So 14? <clears throat> What's that? 14 years? Yeah, but it's been rock and roll 14 years, Bob. It's been okay. up and down. She left, I left, it left, we all left, and you know now, now we're cool. But, you know, dude, you probably have this with Heather. Like, I like waking up next to her. She doesn't bum me out. She doesn't do anything that makes You know what I mean? I still like her, you know? And that's and you can cue that Fred music right now, by the way. <laughs> the violins in the background. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I still like her. So after 14, you know, she just, we just keep finding each other. So right now I'm kind of tucked in. But, yeah, dude, you know, I, I did my thing back in the day, dude. I mean, I was in a band. I'm red-blooded American. Irish American likes to drink a lot of beer and, and, and rock, and chicks are definitely part of that. Hey, we're coming to, uh, is it, Brent, is it? Uh, August 9th, we're coming to Orange County to the Au- Grove. August You guys know I'm there, dude. Bubba Palooza is coming August 9th, right, Brent? Yep. How'd it go last weekend, man? I haven't heard the complete details. Oh, it was great. Spice Boy, it, right? Spice Boy got it from a groupie in the parking lot of Denny's. What? Uh, just what? Uh, yeah, yeah, just yeah, old Cougar. Uh, nice. Yeah, so Pro- I mean, probably to be honest, we probably won the smack in the day too, man. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you find my class ring, dude? Cool. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> now, Brent and, and Henry might come to the show as well. Yeah, Henry's going to be back in town. He's overseas right now, and also I think Glenn, Dan, I think Danzig's coming as well. Glenn Danzig, oh, yeah. that'll be bad. If they don't see Henry and Danzig coming. Hey, you know, we might want to have Brent. We might want to have a, 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 a stack ready to go. These guys might want to do a little impromptu. <laughs> <laughs> and Danzig will kick to be say no. Danzig wants to kick. My- Anyway, because our first record, 95, we had a song on there called Dancing, Dancing. Needs a Hug. Yeah. <laughs> oh. He wasn't too stoked on that, man. He goes, Sugar Ray can suck my dick. And, and he'll kick your ass, too, man. <laughs> that, that guy will kick your ass. That guy's 60, he'll kick your ass. And, 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 and Henry Rollins ain't no pussy either. Oh, Henry Rollins will beat the live out of you and then tell you eloquently why he did it. Yeah, he will. He'll kick your ass, and then he'll shame you like a father as to why he kicked your ass. <laughs> and tell you how disappointed he is in you. He's the emasculation king, man. I love that guy. Well, Henry, he's got a new... Uh, Henry got, could probably talk you into kicking your own ass. He's gonna, you know what? He probably could. Punch man. yourself in the face right now. <laughs> hey, you know what I hung with last week? I went to the Calzaghe Hopkins fight. Right. And I was uh, getting in a car to go over there. You know, the Planet Hollywood is arranging cars. I get in the car and I see this cowboy boot, man. And then I see this leather jacket. And I'm like, oh, 
It was this dude, Chuck Zito in there. Man, nice. <laughs> just chilling, man. So cool. And like, check it out. Chuck wants to have a giant MMA fight by the end of the year. He's talking like giant pay per view, millions of bucks. He's talking Tito. He's talking Chuck. He's talking anybody, man. Oh, he's gonna get us kicked. I, I, I hate to break. I, I, I hate to break it to Zito, but he's the Zito. There's no one better to run some promos than Chuck Zito. Oh, you're right. For you're sure. right. You're right. For sure. But he's what 53, 54 years old. He's 55 years old, dude. But you know, his hands are like meat hooks, dude. Oh, I know. Like, I know. He's, got, uh, he's just an animal, man. He's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a, such a character, too. Any, uh, what'd you report on today, Hollywood gossip wise? God, I don't know. I did a show. And I forgot what we did. Oh yeah, some some bear ate some dude out here. Yeah, which just goes to show you. That just goes to show you. You know, you probably shouldn't be with bears. Uh, matter of fact, I mean, and this dude, like, you, you stick your head inside a bear's mouth, man. I mean, it's still a wild animal, bro. You know what I mean? You know, so, now, yeah. So we ran some bears, some bear heat, and then we got into Britney's kind of toning down for her, you know, her, her whole deal. But you know, I, to be honest, I read the prompter, my eyes glaze over, and I go home and put on, you know, flare. <laughs> hey, you know, don't tell anybody though. You know, you, you got to give it to, I, I thought he was a dirt bag, but at the end of the day, man, you know, he really knows how to work, and that is that dirt bag Kevin Federline. I mean, he's getting like what, he gets like what, 50 or 60,000 a month child support, and he's got possession of the kids, and she now wants him back. I mean, I mean who's the smart guy here? We were making fun of that guy forever. The guy goes to uh, Vegas for the night, makes 100 grand, gets laid, gets drunk, and goes home, and goes, what did I do? And yeah, then he, and then, he's getting six figures to host these parties in Vegas. A party. A it's party disgusting. I'm going to pay to go to. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Well, not only that, but just the, just the monthly Vegas that he's getting from Britney for child support. Uh. Just that, too, as well, dude. I mean, Federline, dude, whatever you think of that guy, that guy is, is smelling like roses yeah. right now, bro. Now, who do you, all right. Like, who do you like? Like, in Hollywood, who do you like, McGrath? Like, who do you like? Like, who do you hang out with or like? You know, some of the guys I've, I've got to know, you know, and I mean, maybe it's, it's basically from my rock and roll days. Like, you know, Kid Rock is the coolest, man. Yeah, Bob's you know, great. I, Bob's great, man. Yeah, he's such a good guy. He's got such a good heart, man. The guy's the, guy the best. And, uh, you know, hanging with dudes like that, you know, I'm not a full Hollywood set guy, but, you know, I get in the mix out here and go to the club stuff. But, I, you know, I, I've got my friends from Newport Beach. I grew up in Orange County, as, as Brent knows. And yeah, uh, oh, yeah. I still got basically my band's my friends, dude. And I got my friend uh, Mick G, who directed all the Charlie's Angels movies. He's doing the new Terminator 4 with Christian Bell. So I lay low. I'm laying the cup, but I'm not like Jimmy. Let's be fake best friends. Oh, and, and Spade too is cool. I see Spade out a lot. Now, do you still hang with Rodney and Murphy? Oh yeah, yeah, dude. They're still in the band, man. No, we're just we've all tried to leave. We've all tried to destroy it. We've all tried to go to rehab. It just didn't work. We also got each other. You I know mean, what I mean? One night I hung with you guys at, at five nine oh two, and afterwards, like you came up and we were talking. Like there was nobody in the club that night after you guys played. <laughs> Back, back, I mean, it was early on. It was back when you guys were Shrinky Dinks. Yeah, dude. And uh, you used is that when wearing, wearing Ronald McDonald pants? Wear, no, not the Ronald, the, the actual the pants that the workers wore at McDonald's. Those blue pants you used to wear those on stage. I rocked those, dude. How did you know that? Because I had one I was, pair and had the lamb on them. I was so proud of them. Yeah, and then I was, I was hanging with you afterwards, and you had like 10 drink tickets, and you like, here, you gave me a couple. I said, here you go. Let's, let's, let's drink. Let's party. You and Rodney were always way cool at gigs. Now, I'm going to give one name to you, and you tell me, you, you know, don't be politically correct. Tell me what you really think about them. Ryan Seacrest. You know, I'm going to tell you right now, and it's, you know, I, I think Seacrest is a master of what he does. And, like, I know it's not cool to say on these channels, and <laughs> I, I've done this thing a little bit, and I, I've seen the live TV gig, and I've done a little bit, bro. I mean, the guy is really good at what he does. And I've met him. He's been nothing but cool to me. Like, coming up to, like, you know, when he started Star out here in L.A., the guy's been a bro to me, man. I hear it. I hear what people, you know, think or don't think about no, it. No, I'm not, I'm not going to say anything. I just rather, I want to hear somebody that's met the guy like you. I can, I can take your opinion more than I can take, you know, people that are probably envious of what he's making and what he's doing well, fellow I was, radio I, guys i was I reading the big ryan dude he doesn't you know when you meet him in person he he, he knows what people think of him. he's very self-aware mm -hmm. you know he's not walking around like hi guys you know, he, he clowns himself he's self-effacing and he gets it he gets it to the tune of 20 million bucks a year yeah i was God, gonna say God love him man he, he know yeah like you said he's very self-aware I, I read an article i think it was in like details magazine or something about him and yeah. how he was making fun of himself and he's like look i know people call me i know the frosted tips this and the frosted tips that and you know the whole deal but uh, slowly around him he's he's really Built himself an empire. Yeah, and, oh, and he's, he's the executive. It's a decor, dude, and it's, it's ridiculous what he's done. And I think know? he's the executive producer on the Kardashian show and a couple That's other things. That's his show. He and does, he's still you know, young. He does, he does, he's got 50 jobs. He must be Jamaican, dude. He's got like, <laughs> he does, does the top 40. He does American. I mean, there, he does that morning show out here in LA. You guys know what morning shows are like, yeah. dude. They're, they're bears, man. He does yeah. like five different things. So I got other respect for guys on his grind making some dough, man. Yeah, you know? and he's grinding frosted out tips. I'll be the last guy to make fun of a guy for having frosted tips. Yeah, I mean, tips. frosted tips made, <laughs> made you a few. A few, a few fin dollars now, didn't I? Might have been I might have been responsible for that nightmare. Yeah, but Mark's it's, cool. It's funny to see. It's funny. It's funny to see Mark on TV because you know, you know, he, under his long sleeves. He's
He's all tatted the fuck up. And, <laughs> oh, bro, you see my back now, dude. Mr. Cartoon got on it, man. It's all just oh, you got, up. You got Mr. Cartoon to do it? Yeah, yeah. I got it. Got my chest and arms. I know. Then I'm all, like, douchey in my, like, suit. It's like, hi, guys. Welcome. <laughs> you know? But, I mean, again, I think stuff where, like, I'm almost, like, compassionate about a guy. It's like, I mean, I know people are all Mark Rath, what a douche, this, that, and the other. And, and I understand. I mean, I've done a lot of douchiness stuff, and it's been well documented. But luckily, I've been paid for that. You know what I'm saying? Hey, but yeah. I, if but it, it makes money. It's the same token, I understand people going, oh, that guy's a kook, or that guy's a douche. Hey, there's, not a guy in this, there's not a guy in this room, even Ned, Brent. If somebody said, hey, Brent, we'll give you you know, a million bucks to prop you up, put a suit on, and, and report on Hollywood <laughs> Entertainment for, thir- get, for 32 yeah, minutes a day. Sign me I, can't get there, I can't get there fast enough. Get propped up it's to not a big, the worst thing, you guys. It's not the worst thing I've ever done. I used to move drywall. That sucked. <laughs> well, you know, Mark, <laughs> speaking of douches, like, I, was, um, I always thought Ryan F- Philippi, or however you say his name, I always thought he was kind of a douche. I'm like, okay, he looks kind of smart. Me, you know, whatever. And then yeah. I heard him on Howard and I watched him on Howard TV, and he seems like one of the nicest, coolest, down to earth cats. And it's sort of the, the way the media portrays these guys, they sort of like want you to think he's a douche. But in all, in all, in all honesty, he seemed like a really, really cool, down to earth dude. Right, I feel the same way. You know, it's Ryan Philippi, by the way. I know that for sure. Philippi, you got it okay. right because I have to say the name every now and then. Uh, but I felt the same way. I listen to Howard. I'm like, I want to have a beer with that dude, man. That guy exactly. sounds cool as hell. And then I heard he went to the gig and hooked up with JD. And they all went to the club. I go, that guy's righteous, man. Because like, you know, it's one thing to be on the radio doing all, hey, bro, high five stuff. But like, the guy went to Artie's gig for no, you know, just because he's a right. fan. He loves it. And then hung out with JD. Got him, you know, bought a Beetlejuice he head. Led him, led him to say ass. He failed, but you know what I mean. He got him there. Where does Mark? Where does Mark McGrath stand on the? Uh, three people that are running for president. You know what I mean? I, I, of all of them, I, I don't know, man. I think I'm just going to have to just join the flock, and I'm, I'm down with Obama, I guess. I'd have to put my hat in the ring. You know what I'm saying? It I seems like not, mo- not. most of L.A. is down with Obama. Is that I'm the truth? Down, I'm down with Obama. Because people in L.A. are young and smart. <laughs> I have to say so, dude, but between New York and L.A., it's McCain City, man. You know what I, I mean? Uh, and, like, I think McCain's going to be the next president. What do you guys think? I'm going to talk about it. But McCain's going to win. Yeah, Hillary and Obama going to cancel South Island. It's going to be McCain, dude. We're going to have, you know, and Brent, you know, the thing is going to be carrying on forever out there. It's going to be McCain. McCain's going to win because he's going to win Ohio and Florida. It's, it's this simple. You win two out of these three states, Ohio, Florida, Pennsylvania. McCain wins Ohio, Florida. He wins. And Brent, thanks for being my daily show, bro. I get all my political, like, insights from you. <laughs> I'm not even kidding you. No, no, how helpful, how often do you listen, Mark? I listen every day, dude. My, you know, I, I, you know, me and Howard. I, that was such a joy for me, by the way, to talk to Howard right there. You guys, thank you for that. You need but, a you know, text I put out us Howard when you're listening. In my office, and I come after taping the show. You guys are on. You guys, you guys take me home, and then you know, I, I switch back and forth at night. It's on a loop in my house in every every room. You know, you guys, you guys <laughs> are my awesome. boss, man. Totally. Like, like when I was an intern at KNAC, I used to intern for Long Paul. I used to love coming out to Shrinking Dinks gigs and hanging with you guys. We you guys get, were like, you guys were like cool, down to earth dudes. We got to get Mark the latest Bubba swag. I bet you didn't have the new Nedley, uh, the Ned. The Ned Hardley shirt. Yeah, yeah, I got nothing, bro. You gotta hook me up. <laughs> you know, oh man, I gotta get you some. We got all kinds of cool Bubba Army. A big care package out there, man. Yeah, hey, let's Bubba, make... what are you gonna do for your birthday tonight, bro? Are you gonna sit, knock out the rattler, and get on Heather, or what? <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> I, uh, you know, I think I'm gonna get something tonight. Yeah, and you better, uh, dude. You deserve now, it. Now, of which, speaking of Heather, guess who Heather thinks is hottest? Oh, Who's that? Martin McGrath. Because when we saw. Oh! When we yeah, saw him at, when when we saw him she, at Man- tell the story, Brent. When we saw him at Mandalay Bay, I went down to say hi hi to Mark because I didn't know you know if he remembered me or not. But from you know, I talked to him on July fourth when he came here to play right. with Sugar Ray, and I that I used to hang with the guys at uh, Shrinky Dink shows all yep. the time in Southern California. So I went over to say hi, and then Heather comes up, Brent, introduce me, introduce, introduce me, me to Mark, <laughs> introduce me to so Mark. Then she turns to me and goes, Bubba. I didn't know he was so handsome. I go, well, what did you say? And she goes, well, I'm just saying. Uh, Donna's Donna's hot for him, too. So he, he's got all our wives at, uh, at, at Orange County. Bobby, you hit the jackpot, dude. You hit the jackpot. She's gorgeous, yeah. Yeah, well, all of our fuck you. You know what? I, mean, I really don't think we care, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, well, you know what? They can be distracted with him because oh, there's some hot chicks in Orange County. Manson would divorce his wife on anybody, but it'd almost be like almost sport material. You're like, see my wife over there, Donna? She Mark McGrath. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, OC's got some hot chicks, man. You're right, Brent. Yeah, I was man. raised in Newport, so. so. So I'm gonna try to. Uh, I'm gonna. Yeah, cause that's where I got my uh, my first tattoo is out in Newport Beach. Oh, well, I'm, what, how many you have now, dude? Yeah, I saw you. Your pictures are kind of all linked up. Oh, yeah, I've got. Five, I think, total now. Spice you know, you got to start new. connecting the dots, bro. That's what I've been doing, you know? Yeah. you got to get rid of the wreckage, and you connect them all and just become <laughs> one big Travis Barker body <laughs> Hey, you see, he got a big settlement from Rockstar Energy Drinks. Who did? I saw that, man. Yeah, uh, Travis that Barker. That filthy rich to begin with. Yeah. yeah, I guess they used his picture or some kind of something. Yeah, with an ad. And, uh... 
and he went and they got a huge. They, they didn't disclose how much it was, but it, it, they got a huge, got a huge deal. I got to tell you, Mark, I think I think his ex Shannon Mokler is so fucking hot. I don't smoking, dude. Yeah. She's, she's like Marilyn Monroe esque. You know what I mean? Right. She could be three hundred and fifty pounds, and I still think she'd be smoking. I'm hearing you, dude. I hear, I hear what you're saying. Who's the exactly. hottest? Who's the hot in Hollywood night right now, Mark? Well, dude, I like Latin broads. I'm a Latina fan. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? I always have been. But to me, dude, and, and I think Rosario Dawson is the hottest chick in the world. I don't know who and that I, is. I, I usually mm-hmm. don't get. I don't get some high five. I usually don't. But she just. I, I don't know. Oh, Something about her, dude. You like Latin insane. broads? What about Rihanna? What do you think about her? Mm-hmm. I think she's super hot too, dude. I just, just, you know, there's something a little, you know, she's very exotic looking. You know what I'm saying? But uh, yeah, it's not right down the, you know, middle for me. But. She's got a squished in face. Well, she's. But, you know, I saw Penelope Cruz the other day on the internet, and she had some. She did some like topless scene, dude. And, oh my god, you've seen that? No, I haven't. I want yeah, to see that. She, she, there was some got leaked, and like Ben Kingsley and her are filming the scene, and she's topless. I'm like that. She's got the nicest. See, that's Hollywood that speak. Seen. That's Hollywood speak. That I, to, to, uh, that's Mark McGrath. I have to be politically correct. Speak for I to Penelope Cruz. <laughs> that's exactly Thank God you guys can read between the lines. On the, Spice, on, you would too, bro. I'm telling on you, the I'm internet, telling on the internet means a guy saying I was on the internet looking at those <laughs> photos of such girl means to Philippi Cruz. Voter with a voter. Rosario Dawson. She was in one of my favorite movies of all time, Kids. Oh yeah, oh yeah, kids is great. That's why my love first started there, dude. That's, and it hasn't ended. I, I'll I tell think you, she's so hot, and she's super cool too. It, it seems like it. I, I've never I was watching this thing on E this weekend, and it was uh, I don't know if her name Shannon or Sharon Harris. She does the uh, the E investigates can women behind bars deal. Yeah. Have, have you seen her? No. I think it's either Shannon or Samantha. I think it's Samantha Harris. And I mean, I know, the girl, not the girl on uh, Dancing uh, Dancing with the Stars, is it? Might be her. Dark hair? Dark hair, skinny. Uh, I, but she Possibly. Does, possibly, but God, that's my look, man. That dark, straight. She had it curled up. She did She did two uh, specials. For, she does all the E, like, uh, I investigate kind of deal. Yeah, right. I want to tell you something, man. E, E's turning into a pretty good channel. They got some good... They've got some really good programming, dude. There's e, no doubt about it. Yeah, they got you know? a lot of their new special specialty programming. Like, they're investigating... They're kind of getting into, like, an MSNBC kind of... You know, like Hollywood murders. They had a thing on a couple of days ago about women who, uh, like the girl who married uh, Ted Bundy and the girl who married the Ramirez. Women who oh, like married, when they were in prison, on death row. Yeah, ma- like yeah. Monster broads. Oh man, the girl that married Richard Ramirez drives me up. The guy that's currently on Florida death row, and the reason there's a reason why you're, you're you know a guy on Florida death row will pick. I mean, she's well, yeah, because she ain't going anywhere. You know I mean, a pig's only going to be able to find a guy that's not even going to be around here that long. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> You guys, are you guys watch those lockup shows, lockdown? Yeah, oh, one of my favorites. My wife's addicted to those things. That I and, can't and, stop watching them, dude. All oh, my TiVo looks like I, I'm in prison. You know? Yeah, <laughs> between <laughs> that and like I'm the Gangland, same way. <laughs> I'm the same way. My Gang, TiVo. I'm addicted to Gangland, 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 Gangland on History on the, Channel. Oh, that's one of the Gangland best. Gangland is so good. Yeah, man, with the, you see that biker one of the outlaws. Yeah, oh, yeah that's one of the yeah. best. Yeah. My, I don't know how that cop got away with it without getting axed, man. You my, know what I mean? The guy's allowed to tell about it. He doesn't even care. They don't hide him anymore. My TiVo actually had to give gave me a warning a couple days ago that. I'm low on memory because I got so many lock up and <laughs> you know, iron heart, iron heart, iron justice. Have yeah. you seen that one? Yes, dark heart, iron yeah, fist. I something think something like oh, yeah. that. That's great too, man. You, you got to get, you gotta get gangland on your TiVo, man. I got gangland. I got oh, the gangland. I love I'm, I'm, I'm just not going to talk about it like you idiots. I don't want to get fucked. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding, right? Me and Henry Hill will be on a boat of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, man. We got to keep in touch, and I got to get a package out to you, my yeah, friend. Yeah, put, put on, on, put on hold. I love you guys. Thanks for you know making my day and getting me through the day, man. Anytime you're listening, give a Shoot us a text so I can play a little Sugar Ray or something to let you know we're thinking about you. Well, I don't want to bum out your audience about your flogging Molly. Or I don't give a Mel- 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 it's 420. Maybe we'll hit you with something. Yeah, make, if you're ever listening, just hit, hit me, Brent, or Spice up on our texts. And uh, bring, give him my cell phone as well. Okay. Hit me up on my text, and I'd love to play some Sugar Ray I, let you know we're thinking about Mark, I'll send your publicist all our info as well. That'd be awesome, you guys. I mean, really, it's a pleasure to talk to you. And Spice, thanks for you know putting me in that mix there with Howard. Man, that was great, man. Oh, you guys are family. You're the man, bro. Mark, let me like put it. you on hold, okay, buddy? Happy birthday, brother. Thank you, Mark McGrath. Mark McGrath.